I'm going to start us with some prayer, and then I'm going to get into this this message. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for for the the last song, God. This morning, we thank you for that one um, because. <laughs> What it all boils down to at the end of the day is we're, we're thankful for the fact that you love us, that you love us enough to suffer and to die and to redeem us back to you, that you've made a way for us to be right with you, and it's because you got right with us. It's not about us getting right with you. Uh, we just thank you for that, God. We thank you for the cross, for the work that Christ did on our behalf, and for the, the resurrection, uh, the life that we have in him abundantly through your grace, God, in all things. We thank you for this service this morning in Christ's name. Amen. So um, we're going to get, we're going to on this morning. It's the first message in this place, and so I'm going to be a little bit uh, moving around because I don't know where to stand yet. But I'm, I'm excited about this week's message because last week or two weeks ago when we were here, we had a fight plan. We had to get your mind right and get ready for the fight. And this week, we're going to take a fighting stance. And my, my fighting people always like that kind of stuff because they enjoy this idea of, of getting in there and getting in the fight and throwing down and taking off the gloves. And, and I like it too, and, but we're putting it into a different perspective when we talk about what Christ has done at the cross. So our main text this week is from Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 20. But I want to open us up in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 12, because I think that this... This gets our mindset right. We've got to have that plan before we get into the stance. And it says here in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 12, Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. And, and so if we're going to have a fighting stance, it's got to be, we've got to have a good base. You can't, you can't just have your feet together and be like, oh, well, because you're going to fall over. You're going to get knocked down. You've got you to gotta have a good base underneath you. Maybe one foot back. Maybe, maybe ready to throw a punch. I'm not going to fight. Anybody up here to show me how to throw a punch because they'll knock me out. But you've got to be in a good position. And, and this is what Paul is writing to the Corinthian church. He says, let him who thinks he stand take heed lest he fall. Be, be aware of what you're standing on. And he, before this, he's prefaced this whole thing before he gets to this statement with what Israel did in the Old Testament. And he, he talks about they all walked under the cloud. They all walked out of Egypt. They all walked through the sea. They all did all of these things, but they forgot what the ground was that they were standing on. They all drank from the same spiritual rock. And Paul says that rock was Christ, but they all forgot what they were doing. They all forgot where their fur feet were firmly planted. They all forgot what God had done for them, and they turned everything around into what they could do for God. They turned it all around. They started creating idols. They started worshiping other things. They started doing all of these other things, and they fell from the grace of God that he had already given them to bring them out. They wanted to be justified by how good they could be. They wanted to be justified by their works. They wanted to, to stand up to God and say, we can be as good as you want us to be, God. And all of this stuff they forgot where they were standing. They forgot where God had placed them. They forgot what God had done for their lives. And so they fell. They fell back into bondage. They fell back into sin. They fell back into struggles and sickness and heartache and famine and disease and all of these things that came in their lives because they didn't take heed on where they were standing. And so this morning, we're going to stand. That last song said something about standing in it somewhere in, in there. I know it did. I know the word stand showed up for at my feet firmly planted and standing. And so it lines up with what we're going to talk about today. In Ephesians 6, he's writing about putting on the armor of God. And, and I think before we, we got the plan, we know, we know what the gospel is. We know that Jesus died on the cross, that his, his blood forgives me of my sins, and, and that I'm right with God based on his righteousness, not based on my righteousness. And that's the, that's the plan. We've, we're focused on that. But then we got to get dressed. we got to get suited up into the plan. we got to put on the armor of God. And so he writes this. He writes, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be I love, it's just right out of the gate, be strong where? In the Lord, not be strong in, in your thoughts, not be strong in who you are, not be strong in your ability to, to, to decide today, I'm not doing that junk anymore. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. It's all about the gospel, it's all about be strong in what Christ has done and in the power of what He has done at the cross. It's not about if you can work your way to the forgiveness, if you can work your way to the salvation, if you can work your way to the blessings and the, the healings and all of those things. It's be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Whose armor? 
God's armor. It ain't your armor. It's not even your armor. This is how, this is how awesome the grace of God is. is. He doesn't want you to put together some crappy suit that's got holes and chinks and all kinds of stuff in it that, that, uh, that a dart might go through or that a bullet might get in. He says, put on my armor. My armor's perfect. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And stand. I love that word because it's hard just to stand. It's hard to stand sometimes. It's hard to just stand there and be like, you know what? My fight is not fighting. My fight is just standing. My fight is just is standing here. I see what's going on in the world, and that's not my fight. That's not my fight. That's God's fight. That's God's battle. That's Jesus' work out there in the world. That's, that's his plan to save uh, minds and to, to renew hearts and to change opinions and, and to change behaviors. I'm not in the behavior changing industry. I'm not doing that. So I got to stand here and I got to not fight with that. Stand against the wiles of the devil because what we see physically is a representation of what's happening spiritually. It's the, we got to stop with this attitude that the people that are doing bad things out in the world are the ones that we're supposed to be fighting against all the time. That we're supposed to go out there and fight this idea and that ideology and, and this lifestyle and that lifestyle and this choice and that choice. We aren't supposed to fight that stuff. Those are physical representations of what's going on in spiritual realms. And it's none of our business to get involved with that. It's our job to just stand. Stand firm on the promises of God. Put on the whole armor of God and stand still. Don't go out and fight it. God just wants you to try on his shoes, okay? Put on the whole armor of God so you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Because the next verse says it. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. I just said this because I knew it was coming up. I didn't make it up. I'm not that smart. Okay, I knew it was in the next verse. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We have to stop wrestling against flesh and blood. Well, our, our fighting stance, we, we can take that stance. We can, we can stand firm on the promises of God. We can, we can say, I believe fully 100% in the gospel of Jesus Christ and that he died on the cross, that his blood fully forgives me of all of my sins, that I'm made right with God by his work, by his stripes I am healed. There is no condemnation for me because Christ has, has released me from from sin and guilt and all of those things we can stand in that and not throw punches we can stand on the promises of God we can stand on the gospel message and we can do all of that without trying to knock everybody down without trying to hit somebody on the chin and cause them to lose their ground and cause them to lose their hope what we can do is we can stand firmly on the promises of God and just as Jesus accept everybody that came to him we can accept everybody that comes to us without judgment without condemnation and not without this idea that oh if I accept this person the way they are that I, it's my responsibility to speak the truth to them in, in some loving way. That's just a, an easy way of Christianity saying it's my job to tell you you suck and, and that I can do it because the Bible says I'm doing it lovingly. Okay? That's not what the scripture means. Okay? We speak the truth in love. We talk about Jesus Christ. We talk about his work at the cross. We talk about the fact that you are already forgiven. That God is not looking at you to condemn you for what you've done because he's already condemned Jesus for what you did. Okay? He's looking at you to wait for you to realize that Jesus has already saved you. We do not wrestle against powers, but against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. That's where the fight is. The fight is spiritual. The fight is in your mind. We can take that stance, but the fight is upstairs. The fight always starts upstairs. The fight is won or lost upstairs. Watch, watch fighters. When they, when they come up on stage and they meet eye to eye, when they, when they, before the fight or right in the ring, watch them. The fight is won at that moment because one fighter comes up and is like, and the other one goes, and that's it. That fight's over. That fight has already been lost. The one who went like this, he was looking for a way out. She was looking for a way out. She was not looking at her opponent anymore. The fight was already won. It was, this, uh, I can get over there. So the fight starts up here. The fight is won up here. It's a spiritual fight. we got to be reminded continually of what Jesus Christ has done at the cross. We're not fighting flesh and blood. We're not fighting behavior. Okay, behavior is an irritant. Believe me. <laughs> behavior is an irritant. Okay? And it, it will frustrate you. And it will aggravate you. And it will cause you to have... Uh, heart palpitations and high blood pressure and make you sweat and kick things. Behavior is an irritant. 
But it is not what we're fighting. We're not fighting behavior. We're fighting spiritual warfare. And the, the warfare is in your own mind. It's the devil coming after you. He's coming after you to get you thinking about what other people are doing and to try and focus your attention on that rather than yourself. And he's getting you to think about what isn't Jesus Christ. What isn't Jesus? Because he doesn't want you to think about Jesus. Because the more you think about Jesus, the better off your life is going to be. The devil doesn't want you to think about Jesus. He wants you to think about all the junk that's going on out there in the world. He wants you to, to distract your mind from anything other than what the finished work of the cross says. He wants you to look out there and, and see that there's political agendas and all kinds of crazy stuff going on. And, and question what the word of God is. Instead of saying, I don't care about your political agenda. I am redeemed. I am the redeemed of the Lord <laughs> Let them say so, okay? So, he says, Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. When it comes to you, that you may be able to withstand. And having done all, to stand. Stand. I, we should have done that song. Stand in the place that you... No. It's like, don't sing. You are this bad this morning. Have you underlined, I, I should have told you to underline all places where it says stand in this, in this passage of Scripture, because we're going to go on to verse 14 where it says, Stand therefore... Having girded up your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith with you, which will be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked one. Stand there for. Okay? He cannot emphasize it enough that we are not going out into the world to battle people. We are not going out into the world to battle behavior. We can live our lives, and our neighbor can live their lives, and we may believe that our neighbor's life is wrong, but it is not our responsibility, even as a fully devoted follower of Christ, to go next door and knock on the door and say, I really think that you should change your behavior because the Bible says so. That's not our position. Paul says, stand still. Stay in your own dang house. Preach the gospel. Talk about Jesus. Don't go knocking on doors and telling people what they're doing wrong. That irritates people. It irritates me when somebody tells me what I'm doing wrong. I mean, I need to hear it a lot. But it irritates me when it happens. And it, it doesn't make me like them anymore. And it certainly doesn't make me want to hang around with them. Oh, so we should just accept wrong behavior? No. But, if it's not affecting you and it's not affecting anybody else, then yes. If it's, if it's not hurting somebody, if it's not killing somebody, if it's, if it's just something that's written down that, that is scripturally wrong according to what the Bible says and your understanding of the Bible, which may or may not be warped some way along the way, but if it says that, it's still none of your business, okay? So stand, <coughs> therefore stand. Having girded your waist with the truth, having, having put on the belt of God's word, having, having understood and cinched it up what the Bible says. That's, that's where all your weapons go, is on the belt, right? So you cinch it up. You put on the belt of truth. I know what the Bible says about the cross. I know what Isaiah 53 says. I know that by his stripes I am healed, that he was, he was wounded so that I could be made whole, that he was broken so that I could be put back together, that he was forsaken so that I could be accepted. I know that he died so that I can live. I know that God put him on the cross so he could bring me into heaven. I know all of these things. That's what you're cinching up on there. That's your, that's your weapon system, okay? Put on the, the waistband of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. It covers your heart, all your vital organs, with, with the breastplate of righteousness, of what Jesus Christ has given to you. He's given you his righteousness. He's, he became sin who knew no sin so that we could be made the righteousness of God in him. Put on the breastplate of righteousness, having put on, shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, not the gospel of arguments, not the gospel of warfare, not the gospel of you do this and I'm telling you because it's wrong. Not, not, not that gospel. The gospel of peace. The gospel of peace is what Jesus did at the cross. The fact that you will be saved. That you will have a blessed life. That you will be delivered from what's going on in this world into the next world. You will have those things. That's the gospel message. Above all, I, I should have highlighted that one on there. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Man, we get caught up in like the weapons are the most important thing when we go into battle. I need, I need my gun and my, my this and that. And everybody becomes taser dependent, whatever. But above all, <laughs> taking the shield of faith. This is the most important part of your armor. With which 
I love it. The most important part is more important than the helmet of salvation. It's the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. The devil can't get at you when you're hiding behind the shield of faith. When you have put your faith and your trust in what Jesus Christ has done, because remember, it's not your faith, okay? It takes, if this, I'm going to make it, if that were the shield of faith, okay, that's the shield of faith right there. I'm out here, got nothing, just my own whatever. I need to have faith enough in here to get behind here, right? Because it's not my faith. This is not my faith. This is not my shield. This is, this is God's faith. This is God's faithfulness. This is God's shield. This is Jesus Christ. I don't need, I've got my faith back here, but my faith sucks if we're going to be honest about it. My faith fails, right? I have questionable moments. I start thinking, man, is this really what God's plan is for my life? Is this really what's supposed to happen? I don't understand why this happened or that happened. My faith is, is all over the place. The guy in the New Testament says, Lord, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. He's got some faith, but he gets himself behind the shield of faith. He gets behind Jesus' faith. He says, I believe in you, but I don't believe in you. But help me with it. Okay? Give me a little bit of hope. Okay? So he gets behind the shield. So I've got to take my faith and put my faith behind his perfect faith and say, what the Bible says, what Jesus says, what he did, that's true. Okay? I'm not true, but the Bible's true. Okay? So I get behind the shield of God's faith. It's God's shield. It's God's faith. It's God's provision. And I duck in behind that. And the devil can't get me back here. If I stay out here, and I tell myself I'm going to persevere. I'm going to be strong. And then whatever gets thrown at me, you know, that there's, there's all these stupid memes that are religious mumbo-jumbo lies on Facebook that are like, the devil whispered in my ear and said, the storm is coming. And I said to the devil, I am the storm. All this stupid stuff is, 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 is it's, it's, it's self-righteous behavior. It, it's, it's this attitude, it's the Old Testament attitude that Israel had when they said anything you say we should do, God, we're well able to do. It's the same attitude. Yeah, the devil can throw stuff at me, but I'll fight him. I'll fight him. No. I ain't into fighting, okay? I want to be behind the shield of faith. I'm going to just go ahead and grab that and pull it back over here and stand in behind it. Because all the fiery darts of the devil can't get at me when I'm back here. He can't shoot me when I'm behind the shield. He can't get at me behind the shield. He can throw stuff at me. He shot cancer. All right? You can block it. All right? It's all good behind here. He can't get your kids. He can't get your wife. He can't get your parents. He can't get your, your job. He can't get your career. Man, he can throw some stuff at you, but he can't get it. You might peek out around the edge, and then he might get one in every once in a while. But <laughs> if you stay back here, man, that's where it is. That's, where, that's a sweet spot right back here. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You've got to know what the Bible says. Okay? You put on the helmet of salvation, but the helmet's just something you're wearing back here behind the shield. And take the sword of the Spirit. Notice he doesn't say draw the sword of the Spirit. He doesn't say start swinging the sword of the Spirit. You know why? Because it ain't for the other people. Your job is to stand with the sword behind the shield with the helmet and the breastplate and the shoes and the belt. All because of what God is doing for you, ahead of you, because of the work of Jesus Christ. You don't have to swing the sword. You just take the sword. What God wants you to know is what His Word says. You take the sword so you understand what the Word says that applies to your life specifically. It's not a swinging sword. It's a, it's a sword. It's my own sword. Man, it's got Scripture written all over it. This sword has promises on it. This sword has hope written on it. This sword has provision and prosperity and life and abundance written all over it. Read the sword every day. Take it with you. Hold it behind the shield of faith and read what it says. When the fiery darts are hitting this side, you're back here reading this side. It says, my God is my strength and my strong tower. You're hiding back here because the devil is shooting stuff over here. Which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all <coughs> the saints. And for me, I love Paul just throws it in there at the end. For me. Uh, that I may open my mouth, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. That's the end of the passage. We're not. It's not about fighting. It's about, it's about standing. 
It's about taking a good stance. I mean, you want to have a good stance. You want to be able to be firm on your feet. You want to, you want to show that you're strong and, and confident, but it's not about you going out and doing battle. It's, you've got to have the right mindset. You've got to know what the Bible says. You've got to know what the gospel is. Even Paul finishes this all out. He says, do all of these things. Stand firmly on what I have told you. Get behind the shield of faith. Put on the whole armor of God. Understand what the Bible says. Understand what the gospel is. And pray all the time. Pray for me, guys, because I am in chains for the gospel. I have been arrested because of the gospel. Remember, Paul's in prison most of his ministry life. But he, he still does all this thing because he wants to make known the mystery of the gospel. It's a mystery. Man, and that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to reveal the same mystery that Paul was revealing back then. Because it's hidden. The devil wants to keep it cloaked. He wants you to, to hear the law. He wants, because when, when you hear the law, the Bible says, your hearts and your minds are veiled to the gospel. Your hearts and your minds are veiled to the truth. It's like a covering comes over and it doesn't come in. It doesn't, it doesn't land. You don't understand it. And the gospel is a mystery. And the gospel is foolishness. It's craziness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved. It is the very power of God unto salvation. we got to make known the mystery of the gospel, exactly what we're talking about on Easter Sunday. This isn't your typical Easter Sunday service. This isn't like, hey man, she went to the tomb and nobody was there, and the linens were folded and it was just laid there. This isn't what you're hearing this morning. Man, I came to church on Easter and I heard a, a message about putting on the armor of God. Why? Because the Savior is risen. He is out there. He defeated your enemy already. He's already fought the battle. He's already won the battle. What we got to fight for? He's already won. He already stands victorious. The other song we are going to sing this morning that my voice just wouldn't let us do says, You reign victorious over all. That's what it's all about. Jesus already fought the fight. He already won the battle. All we got to do is put on his clothes and pretend that we're doing something. All right? We stand back here behind the shield of faith, and we let God do all of the work. We mind our own business when it comes to things that don't matter to us, when it comes to things that don't affect our lives or the lives of those around us or anybody else. We mind our own business. We stand firmly on the promises of God back here, and we, we want to make known the mystery of the gospel. Jesus Christ was born the only person ever to die. He grew up. He lived a perfect, sinless life, even though you want to talk about fighting. This is a man, when somebody says, what would Jesus do? Remember that making a whip and beating the crap out of people in the temple is always an option. That's, that's one of the things that Jesus did, okay? This is a man who fought that battle for you. He went into the temple. He pushed out the, the evil that was in there, okay? He lived a perfect, sinless life. Even though he got mad a couple of times, even though they got angry, he still lived a sinless, perfect life. And he went to the cross... He hung, he bled, he died, and he was put in a grave. And three days later, he came back up victorious with no sin. He, he walked out of the grave to show that your sin was done. It was gone. When he was on the cross, he said it was finished. That was God's wrath poured out on him. He said, that's enough. It's done. You can't <coughs> overwrath me. I am the sacrifice that remains even though your fire falls down. In the old covenant, the sacrifice was burned up. Man, the, the sacrifice, the water, the rocks, everything that was there came down. God's fire, God's holy wrath came down and sucked it all up. But under the new covenant, when Jesus was on the cross, he remained. The sacrifice remained because the sacrifice of who Jesus Christ is is greater than the wrath of God that is coming on mankind. So we put our faith in that. We stand firm on the promise that we are delivered, that we will have life in abundance, that the devil will still try to steal it from you, that he will still come. The, the devil loves to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to take everything that God has given to you. And the more we peek out from around here, and around here because we don't know what the word says and we think it's about what I can do and we think it's about where I can fight and where I can push back and we forget that the fight is up here and up there and it's not down here it's not physical <coughs> the more the devil can rob you of the joy that God has put in your life, of the peace that God has sent into your life, of the abundant blessings that he sent into your life, of the help that you have Man, when you come out from behind the shield that's where blood pressure goes up Put it back here. I mean, it's okay to have your heart rate up every now and then. That's good for you. But 
We don't want to have it up for the wrong reasons. Amen. Exactly. What is it about? It's about taking a stance. What are we going to stand on? The gospel. We're taking a stance for the gospel. We're not taking a stance for behavior. We're taking a stand. We're taking a stand right here in this new neighborhood. We're taking a stand right here on, on East Depot Street and saying, this is a place where the gospel is preached. This is a place where you can walk in the door and we're not going to judge you. We're not going to question where you come from. We're not going to question who you walked in with. We're not going to question what you're wearing, where you've been, how you smell, or any of those things. All we are going to do is make known to you the mystery of the gospel gospel because it's God's problem to fix what's going on in your life. It's not my problem. I got enough problems. I don't need to try and fix your problems too. Uh, it's not my issue. That's God's issue. That's God's dealing. That's Jesus' work. That's not my work. I don't need to tell you how to fix it. I don't need to give you a seven-step principle book how to fix it. I don't need to write a message to you on how to fix it. You don't need to get an accountability partner to tell you how to fix it and make sure you're fixing it. Let God fix it. That's the mystery of the gospel is that it's all about rest. Come unto me, all of you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Stop trying to fix your problems. Stop trying to get out of your problems. Stop trying to fix everybody else's problems. Give them to me and let me do my work. I'm Jesus Christ, the Savior of mankind. Do you think Jesus can't handle your problems and somebody else's problems? He's got it. Just get behind the, the shield of faith. Put on the whole armor of God and stand firm on the promises of his word. Stand firm on the message of the cross, on the gospel truth that there is an abundant life for you, that he did die, that you are forgiven, that he did come back again, that, that he sits forever at the right hand of the Father, living to make intercession on your behalf, and that God sees you as he sees him, and as he is, so are you in this world. Take a stand for the gospel and the spirit of God's grace. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this place to stand this morning. We, uh, we thank you for Jesus' work at the cross, for what he's done in our lives, and for what he continues to do in our lives. We thank you that the cross and that becoming a Christian isn't just like this one day event where I, I, I confess that I was a believer in Jesus Christ and now everything just goes back to normal and I don't have any hope and I'm just going to keep on fighting. No, it's, it's about I confess my faith in Jesus Christ and I stop fighting, God. I'm not fighting anymore. I'm standing. I'm standing on your promises. I'm standing on what your word says. I'm standing on, on the work of Jesus Christ and, and his sacrifice on my behalf. I'm standing on the, the shed blood that washes away my sin as far as the east is from the west. I'm standing firm on the resurrection hope that Jesus Christ came out of the grave and my sins stayed in there. That he sits forever at your right hand and that he lives to make intercession for me because I'm still a screw up. But I'm behind the shield of your faith, God. And I'm not going to let the devil's fiery darts of condemnation get at me because you aren't going to let them come at me. God, thank you for your word, for the cross, and for Easter, for what Jesus has done in our lives. I pray that you would bless each and every person who goes out of here today with a great peace and understanding of who you are and what you've done. In Christ's name, amen. amen.